Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this morning I want to work on the champagne garden. Now the prompt is pots. So my feeling is I need to work in this zone as a continuation of the glass house. Um, yeah, I'm thinking unless I come in here, which is pretty um, bare, but I sort of feel like that's the ground of something. So I might just save this, this corner for future prompt. And maybe there's something I can do hanging over this in a future prompt. I might just keep up here in this, this here too. I'm just not sure whether that could be something or it's tricky when you don't know what's coming. So I think I'm going to play it safe and cluster some pots in here, which is just the continuation of this cluster of flowers, which might be able to be incorporated into it. I don't know. Anyway, let's just start with getting some pots, maybe placing them and seeing where I go from there. I grabbed out a couple different fabrics, got some linens and some felt. So I just thought, I'll start with a, just a few different colors. They all sort of work. They'll all sort of, you know, blend. Um, so let's cut a pot out. Um, I don't know why I'm overthinking this too much. Let's just start with a, a square see where we go. So I hope you're all having a good day. Well, it's probably too early to really know yet, isn't it? Let's have a little, a little rim and then maybe down to a base. Let's some fairly decent sized pots because what I'm thinking of doing is using mm, that looks like that flower could be part of the pot already that's a bit of a cheat isn't it well my theory was I've got these old laces here not so much that one this one with these little flowers in it and I've been nibbling away at this piece for ages. So I thought I'd like to incorporate some of those. Then I pulled this lace out, which is a bit of a go-to. And this piece was with one of the other, um, uh, what was it? The transition of colour piece. So I'm thinking that there might be able to be used as well. So it's just a case of what flower suits what pot. That's not too bad. I definitely want to use this. And it will need to go in the background or to the side. Sort of to frame the piece. So I might just keep cutting pots out and see which pot best suits the flowers. But I am going to take a little bit more... of this fabric away, just to sort of really highlight the design, I think. Otherwise I'm gonna see more, more white than I am backgrounds and embroidery. This is machine embroidered, this little piece. Such a pretty color, the thread they've used. It's not quite brown, it's like a Platinum, if that's such a colour. Okay. Concentrating. Can you hear the cogs turning? 
Yeah, that's going to look way better. It'll soften the piece a lot. And I think I need to find its location before I get too far ahead of myself. I haven't really put too much thought into any of these pieces. The one that's in my mind a bit is the one that goes through all the different colours because we put pots at the base of the cranial, cranial, oh goodness, I'm sure you're all correcting me. We put pots at the base of the lady's feet. Crinian, crinian, cr forget it. I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> it's gone. So there was, yeah, some little pots there. So I sort of feel like I've done that. I don't know if I want to do any more. So I've been thinking, what else does that garden need? I sort of don't mind it there, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. I think it's sort of got a bit of space there. And I don't mind the fact that that little embroidery is showing. Gosh, you just never know where your piece is going to go until you start piecing things. It's, yeah, it's quite interesting. Let's cut another pot out. I don't know if it's the right size, but we'll give it a trim. Crinoline. There you go. I wasn't going to rest until I got it out of my head. <laughs> I like the pots to have a bit of a rim, a little bit of height. Maybe I am going over here. No, I'm going to go over here. We're going to do... Where are, do I incorporate those flowers? If I unpicked that a fraction, I could slide that pot in there. <clears throat> I'm going to leave it there, sit for a minute. I've got one idea for that other piece. And I saw the idea um, on a couple pieces that were on the Facebook group is a tree with a swing. And I sort of felt like that. Well, first of all, the first thing I thought was, oh, what a lovely idea, because often in a garden is a swing. And being that I already have a human in my picture, I can literally get away with just the swing. And then I thought, well, if the girls do a prompt that maybe is an orchard or a tree or a fruit tree or something like that, I sort of you know, think that that tree could become something or maybe I just make it something now and see how we sort of go. So I'm thinking along the lines of a tree. All my pots are very square. I want them to be a little bit more tall and narrow. Let's just do this guy a little bit different. I'll attempt to. So that's what I'm thinking for the... And I was pretty set on that until I went to bed last night and I started thinking about, this one didn't even pop into my head. I, I don't know, it just was like, oh yeah, something will come together. And this morning I literally walked in here and said, right, pots, let's build some pots. But this other one is lingering. I'm not worried about French garden too. There are so many things I can do over there. It's And the potting shed has got plenty of pots. So I'm thinking, I guess if I drop him down a little bit, I'll have room to do things with flowers. So no use. I still don't feel like that's, oh, I'll leave it. It's very matchy-matchy to this fabric here. Maybe I've got to do my pots down here. I'm worried that this area will get left behind if I don't work it in now. Do I want a felt pot? 
So anyway, what was I saying? Last night, I'm lying in bed thinking about this tree and the swing and how much of a tree do I want to see? Do I just want a branch? I sort of, where's a piece of paper? Look, I'm getting sidetracked. I should save it for that video, but I think I'm still working through the idea. I'm just grabbing a piece of paper. And I think once I do this bit, this idea business, I'll have more of a, I'll be more settled. So do I do the classic, just a branch, you know, with we're in a close up, but it's a massive tree. And then down comes the swing, which is just the illusion of it, just hanging there in the distance that sort of thing or do I go the whole nine yards and start with you know a brand uh, the actual trunk and then out comes numerous branches and you know build it up with French knots and let's say the orchard thing comes along and then in goes some apples or some oranges or thing something so it's a tree that could be added to and then you just drop the swing in then I could do grass around the base and things like that. So that's, that's where I'm at. Do I do something that leads into another prompt and is quite elaborate or do I keep it just simple and elegant and the illusion of what's happening over there? That's where I'm at. I'm like, my feeling is this, but I don't know. I don't know. I've got time. I've got to do this one first. So yeah. That's what I'm thinking with the and the other thing I, and the other thing I'm thinking, you know this blue area here. I'm wondering if I do do my scene here so that and then embroider little blue flowers through here like it's a little blue field. But I do feel like I need to push back this even more in tone, soften it again. But I'm not sure. I don't know. I do not know. And then how does the blue field look when I make it an apple tree or a, I don't know. That's what kept me awake last night. Isn't that ridiculous? A blooming tree with a swing in it can do that. Those little pots. I don't know if I like the felt coming in. You can probably hear my washing machine beeping in the background. Well, that might be all right there. Maybe I just got to make it smaller, like a tub. No, I think I jiggered that pot. <laughs> I'll hang on to it because we might we might be able to do a tub of flowers somewhere else. I don't know how many pots I'm going for here, but it's looking like it's going to be a lot. <laughs> and I don't mind that because it's still a bit big. I mean, this space now, I think it's because I'm giving it a little bit. Oh, look at that. Horrific. Let's try that again. Oh my goodness. I just can't get it right. I just keep chopping and this pot is getting smaller and smaller. Oh, look at all the bits. <laughs> I just can't quite get the shape right. Yeah, I think it's because it's felt and it's a bit trickier to get. 
And I think I need to take it just a bit more off. Oh, just a little pot. There we go. Okay. So, I'm pretty happy with that. A smattering of pots. And I'm, I'm happy that I've got a bit of air here so that this fabric is showing. That is showing. I fit that in. It's got that nice um, hemp behind or linen behind. I've got a little squat pot here for little features. Yeah, I'm happy that that is showing. Might end up getting covered up, but yeah, um, I like that. I like my little pots, even though that last pot seemed to be a bit of a struggle. I'll keep that little bit because you just never know, do you? Here's another bit of lace that might have flowers in it. No, they're all a little bit too big. All right. Am I game enough to stitch down some of these pots or should I fiddle with the flowers a little first? Maybe I'll do that. Just in case I have to move the pots to accommodate the flowers. I'll put little embroidery elements through the flowers as well. I like that sitting in there with that big one. And if I bring the pot down so it's just sitting on that line, it sort of feels like there's a bit of ground there as well. Yeah, I just need some small little flowers or, oh look, there's a flower here that has a stem. Can I be tricky enough and cut? that out and have a flower that's got a bit of height to it. If you ever see laces that are clustered full of flowers, just grab them because you just can get so much value out of them. You don't need a lot. Just get the minimum that they'll give you if it's not a roll or something like that. Take this little lot out, this set of three tiny ones. And I'll start building up this little pot, I think, with those. Where'd my little flower get to? Now there's a random leaf coming out the top of this flower that doesn't quite look like it should be there. But we might be able to add it to the side of the stem into there and then we add those leaves back into there and they don't look right they're overpowering we'll hang on to those leaves because we might need them to build up somewhere yeah don't, they look good there um, now what else can I do with that pot with that single flower Need something growing out the bottom of it. I've got another one here that's a little lower. It's not as tall in the stem. Let's snip him out and see if he complements that standing. Fiddly. Another flower for that pot. See, it doesn't look right, that big leaf. I'm going to take him out. It does have its own little leaf anyway. I wonder. 
go if I can get that guy in there. Yep, that works. Can I zoom you in and just so you can see, because it is competing a little bit with the background there. Yeah, see that one there? He is blending a little bit. He pops really well there. Maybe we've got to bring him down into this pot. A single flower there. Leave him there. He does look good in that little pot just by himself. Maybe we do a different flower. Where am I bringing in this guy? It's sort of a different size. Maybe I've got to get rid of that guy and put him up there. I sort of like that fellow there because it's softer and it's not competing with that one at the back. I might see if there's another something. What about this little guy? This little fellow here might complement the tall. I think I'm going to stick with the beiges. I'm not going to bring in any colours. I'm going to keep it very neutral and I'm going to try and make the flowers hold their own texture wise more so. Yeah, that's better. So we've got the one that's shooting up, then the little guy. Then we've got this guy over here by himself. This little leaf. I don't think think he's needed anywhere. I think he's just going to get lost. And I think I need some more little daisies. Here we go. There's a scrap bit here. Some more little flowers. Over here. You're not even on camera. It's a problem with zooming in where it was once comfortable to do some work and you guys can still see is now completely out of view. Okay. Just a couple more, like they're a bit lost on that background there, but I think it'll work. Yeah, I think it'll work. All right, so that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now it's a case of very carefully stitch it. Now that'll be a challenge. Um, mom, mom, mom. What about some of these other flowers lying in here? From these, this piece, there's not a lot of it left now. Do I, oh, don't bump it. Do I bring, hmm, tempted to pop him in somewhere. Doesn't look right over there. This feels quite airy over there, but this feels like it could be a little busier. Don't mind that there. Does link it. Oh, you can't even see. Let me come up a bit, guys. Sorry about that. I've got this, this piece left with that. Anyway, how am I going to do this without them falling off everywhere? They're going to fall off everywhere. I might, I might try and do some pinning. At least if I can hold the pots in place. Easier said than done, it would seem. The little flowers, they can come off because we know, you know, where they're going to go. 
Let's get this pot sitting right here. I must have slept last night with my hand sort of pressing against something in the bed, like it was under my pillow or something, or my head was on it, or I woke up this morning and I had all these tingles down this hand, and I was like, oh my goodness, what's going on? But it sort of felt like it had been asleep all night, well, literally. But after I had a shower, it, it was fine. It did give me a moment of concern, let me tell you. I've had it before where I've had, like, you know, when you tuck your, your hand under your head, say it's on the bed like that, and you're sleeping on your pillow and your hand. So I've done it before, but it just felt quite odd. And I was half asleep in the shower because I literally just stood up and went, oh, must hop up, walked to the shower and then woke up in the shower. And I was like, oh, what's going on with this hand? Had a moment of intrepidation. Okay, let's get that pin in there because that'll hold that little flower nicely. This one will hold this little flower. So this should work. I should be able to pick this up now and put my invisible stitches through and then find some threads that can highlight some things on those pots. That's pretty good. Nothing is going to move. All right, needle and thread. Gee, that took 27 minutes to figure out that. My goodness me. How much time goes into these pieces? Just as much time to thread the needle, to be honest. Okay. start at the top and just start putting some little stitches around those flowers because they're lying on top of the pots so if I can get those secure in turn it will secure the actual pot so there probably won't be video to um, no, there might be because what we might do is around the pots themselves at the base of them all, we could do a little bit of pebbles and things like that to ground them. So I think there will be a second video for this one. By the time I stitch all this down, and I might do it directly after this. So that way it's done and finished just like the last one. So you're watching it two days in a row instead of pushing it to next week's similar time and then you're like, oh, okay, where were we with that particular project? I will stitch it and then film again. For the next stage. We'll see how we go. Okay. I think this week's prompt is a really good one because it's going to give everyone a bit of a breath of breath of air to maybe go back and finish some things that have caught up that need catching up. Like the vegetable patch was such a big statement piece on our pages for some of you that did you know a proper vegetable patch or if your background needs a little bit of work getting some um, camphor stitch down some running stitch in there sort of melting it all together by putting a heap of maybe seed stitch so I think this week will be good just to take a breath have a look back over your piece 
and see if there's anything you want to fix or add or re you know redo or if you want to put in something additional like you know um a beehive for example well this could be your week to start adding some of those elements i still have a few prompts to go so don't get crazy and chew up all your space because you'll you know regret doing things having said that look at the end of the day if there's a prompt that just you cannot fit and you're not too concerned that it's not in your garden it won't matter it might be a week you just do some decorative stitching and it could be just putting little grassy sprigs underneath your pots things like that i don't want to lose those little flowers but i have lost the Oh, goodness me. So, yeah, that's, that's the beauty of these simpler little prompts. I'm sure in that needle box, yeah, there they are, is a, another couple of those flowers. And I've got one here so we might when we do the ground i might try and include them as well not only does it sort of tie it into the random one that's up there but it uses them because they're rattling around in my needle pin cushion I hope you're all enjoying the Henrik the hair video. You would have seen the first one air on um, Friday. He is a lot of fun. The first, I think, four videos I filmed late last year, pre-Christmas. And then I've picked him up again literally this last week to continue on. And I think I'm up to video eight now. I thought it would be seven videos, but then I was stitching his forearms onto his body and I was like, oh, that's something that is a bit of a, a hot tip. So I better turn the camera on. So video number eight is now uploaded waiting for you guys. And there's one every week, every Friday, you'll get a, a Henrik the Hare. And I really wanted to say to the only place that you should be buying Henrik, the pattern from Leslie, is from her Etsy store. The details are in the description of those videos. Leslie is really copping it at the moment from these fraudsters that are using her photos from her page and have created a fake website. There's a few other photos on there too that are definitely not their patterns because they belong to big corporations in America, like crocheting patterns and things like that. So, and what's happening is people are seeing it because they're actually doing Facebook advertising. So it's popping up alongside of, you know, everyone and anyone. And because we're talking Henrik or doing this type of work, the Facebook computers think, oh, this person will be interested in this particular advertisement, which is this dodgy advertisement. I think Rachel had a similar scenario with some of her kits that popped up somewhere. I can't quite remember all the details, but it's just terrible. So they literally just copy the picture that you may be using for your pattern, pop it on their website, then People like us come along and go, oh, yeah, I will buy that pattern. And we pay the money, but nothing comes back to us in the way of a download or a parcel or whatever the thing is that you've just purchased. So, yeah, it's really bad. And poor Leslie, 
I think it started earlier this year. So when I filmed the videos late last year, it just wasn't on the radar as being an issue, but now it is. I reckon at least once a week, someone within their group on their Facebook group, I think it's Henrik and Co Facebook group, is reporting having seen the ad for these, this scam. Let's face it, it's a scam um, out there in the world. And it's all been reported to Facebook and, you know, everything you can do as a designer has been done. But they just go and rename and, you know, make another, another website so that they can carry on with their poor behaviour. It's really bad. Especially when you're a designer selling a pattern that you've slaved over. And someone does that. So any of you out there that are wanting to do the Henrik project from Leslie's pattern, please, please just go to her Etsy store. Do not buy it in the Facebook environment. I'm not sure if they're over in Instagram or uh, Pinterest or any of those places, but at the end of the day, Etsy, 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 Etsy. So I'm going to have to mention that a few times, I think, because it seems to be really prolific. Like I was on Facebook last night chatting to some friends and up popped their ad. I'm like, oh, that's that La Vita, La Vita or whatever the name of the website is. And when I clicked on it, I saw these patterns that were familiar for other designers in America that are crocheting crocheting specialists and I thought oh they're even attacking them and they're big they're a big company so one day they are going to target someone that is going to come back at them with force well we can only hope hey in the meantime poor innocent people get ripped off so yeah Etsy and if you type in Henrik and Co into Etsy, it'll bring it up. If not, just go to go to um, turn that pin around so that it's up, not down. Oh my goodness me! You just got to take your time and get your threads out from behind all these pins. There we go. I think um, Rachel had some digital kits or something pop up. I know Artie Mays had it a bit too. They're just everywhere. They're hitting all industries. It's just oh. makes you angry. Okay, so I might just pop a few stitches in these pots because then I can get rid of this blooming pin. There we go. There we're cruising along. I will say if you're doing a Henrik and you have a bit of pain in your hands... It's probably a project you might not want to do. It will aggravate your hands. Having said that, Susanna did the project where she um, decorated the pieces to make Henrik flat. So they weren't stitched together, basically, where I formed the body of the hair and then I added the elements to decorate him in the way that the pattern does, where Susanna, say this is a leg, she did exactly what we're doing here and then used the sewing machine to join them all together. That would be probably my suggestion if you had some issues with your hands. So what I found was because you're working on a cylindrical surface, 
a lot of the time and around corners and up in the air and Henrik was under my arm and he was across the couch. Like it was like I was manhandling this, this, this hair. So yeah, if you think that that could be a problem for you, I would probably steer clear of the method of the pattern and go more like Susanna and piece them together after you've embellished the actual panels. So, which is not a bad way to go too, because if you want to slow stitch more so than scrappy, it's a lovely way to do it because then you can really embroider. I've got embroidery on my guide, but I did the pieces separate. You'll, you'll understand as the videos go on, but I embroidered them separately and then used them as part of the patches to build up my hair. So it's early stages in the project. So just have a little think about what you'd prefer to do. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I actually, I don't know if you remember, I was planning a... I get together with some girlfriends and at the last minute, one got COVID, one was in a car accident and then there was something else happened to a third. It was just a disaster. As we got closer and closer to this weekend away at Caloundra, we try and do something every year and there's three sisters and me. And I usually take some form of creative something to do because not only do I get bored pretty easily but it gives us something to do as a group and it's a lot of fun so we've made journals and all sorts of things so the plan was around that time I was starting the Henrik oh goodness I've just knotted that badly I was starting the Henrik program uh, the project so I thought oh I'll I'll cut out some additional Henriks and I was going to give the girls all of the pieces and just take a sample of fabric with me. And then we'd go op shopping to find the rest of the goodies that the girls would need and they could just buy their wadding. And we'd all start a Henrik. And of course the project didn't happen because we canceled the weekend about 24 hours before, before we were setting off for this weekend so yeah and then I was like oh goodness you know so I've actually got three Henrix four Henrix cut out I feel like I want to get that up and over the edge but that needs to be in the pot does that make sense so I'm gonna try and nibble that out a little bit yeah so I've got all these Henrik's cut out yet to be made and we just haven't been able to get a date again so if you're listening Marianne to my video get those sisters of yours organized for our annual girls getaway weekend so that I can give you your patterns for Henrik and you can get them stitched because otherwise they're just sitting in my cupboard and I don't want that to roll on to years. How am I going to get my hand around this? I think I might stitch that down first just to hold that lip on there. So that's the what I was doing around the time I was filming this Henrik was preparing, oh goodness me, for that little getaway. Now what happened then is directly after that, um, I got sick. It wasn't COVID or anything. I got sick. So I stopped doing the project and then I just never got back to it. And something happened with Susanna too, that we both literally shelved I think Susanna was busy with one of her projects. I can't remember now. Gosh, it feels like it was forever. So, yeah. Then Henrik went onto the shelf into a box. And I kept thinking, I must get him out. I must get him out. Cause, and then I go, no, no, you've got time. It doesn't come 
onto YouTube. I think I had five videos back then. It doesn't come onto YouTube till uh, March. That's forever. And then before you know, October rolls into November, then Christmas, and there's no chance of anything like that happening at Christmas. And then it's January and I've been busy with my stock orders for my business. And I'm like, oh, it's all right. It's February. I've, I've got heaps of time. There's the whole month of February. You know how you do that. And then you get to February and there was one morning there that I think it was the 28th of Feb. And when the staff go into our shops and deactivate the alarm, a text comes through to say that someone's, you know, entered the building. And now I haven't heard that text for six weeks because during February, end of January into February, our store managers all take their six weeks annual leave. So I hear this little buzz go off on the phone. I'm thinking that can't be right. What's going on? And I I seriously thought that they had got their dates wrong because in my pea brain, I thought there was another week before they would be back. And I actually sent a message to my one manager and said, what are you doing at work? You, The dates, you've got another week of leave yet. And then as I sent it and went zoop and it was gone, I, I thought, oh, I better check the calendar. And the 28th of February, or whatever it was, had turned into the 1st of March. And that was the date that the stores were going to reopen for the 2023 season. So here's my phone buzzing with these store managers coming back to work. I'm thinking, no, no, you've read the emails wrong. It's not till next week. So felt like a bit of an idiot, but, you know, they expect that. Anyway, we're having a giggle and I hung up and I'm like, oh, that Henrik, now I'm in March. I wonder when my first video goes to air. Well, panic mode set in. And because I think we were working on the first prompt for that fortnight, so I knew my days were going to be pretty much getting those prompts under control and filmed and you know before so there's going to be at least another week before I could get to Henrik because the Roxy prompts were in the middle so yeah and I was talking to Susanna and Susanna was a good girl she'd already started Henrik but she was similar to me we would sort of shelved him plenty of time no rush and suddenly where did that time go and Henrik wasn't, comp you know, completed. And I knew that I'd filmed enough to get me through my holiday that's coming up, but I would literally have probably a week back and I would need a Henrik done, ready. So I was like, oh, I'm going to come back from those holidays. I'm going to be either super relaxed and non-motivated, slightly depressed that I'm back, not feeling like stitching, or I'm going to be so gung-ho because I've been cornered on a ship with no outlet and I'll be go, 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 and Henrik won't be an issue. So, yeah, I've decided to pull the finger out so is Susanna and we've pulled our Henrik's out and we're going for it and we just oh loving him I can't put him down I did a forearm last night and I stitched it on his body so both of his forearms are now you know on him just gonna try and do a few little stitches around this edge because it's hanging out in midair and that could be a point of fray so yeah, he's got his got his um, forearms on. So what's left to do are his legs and his tail. And he's done. Oh, and whiskers. I do want to put some whiskers on him, but I'm still thinking about how I'm going to do that. I want them to be like droopy whiskers, not hard whiskers. 
saggy whiskers. <laughs> so I've just got to have a think about the stitching of those. That shouldn't be too hard. I'm sure I'll figure something out. So yeah, that's Henrik and how quickly my year went. Mind you, when I did say to Susanna, let's do Henrik, because I saw him all over Facebook and and um, then I found that panel of fabric last year and I thought, oh, I've got to do something with that. So I told Susanna about the panel and I said, we need to do something with this panel. And at first we had France in our mind because we've got a trip with Lisa Maddock over to Paris in May and that was French and it sort of seemed like maybe we could come up with an idea and then I was like, oh, what if we, you know, do this Henrik? So I sent the pattern picture to um, Susanna and, oh, it was an instant yes. We just, yeah, and that's how it come together. Using some favourite fabrics and a beautiful piece that we've both got. And then a pattern and away we went. And the gorgeous thing is, if you do invest in that French panel, you'll need to watch the video to know what the hang I'm talking about if you haven't. It's on Saturday. Um, that panel is going to be the gift that just keeps giving, I think, because one project out of it so far, and I've still got metres of fabric there printed with this gorgeous imagery that matches the French general fabric. So I can see in my future some more projects with it. I think it'll be giving me morsels for years. Especially when you do slow stitch and you nibble away at things. Oh, where'd the time go? So I pretty much got it all stitched down by this one pot and the one at the base of it. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to finish this video up at our usual one hour mark. And then I will finish doing this type of stitching and I'm going to turn the video back on film the second version and that's when we do some groundwork and embellishing and I'll get the beads out and some of that nice cheesecloth and we'll put a little bit of embroidery around too for the the um, plants that are sitting on the ground around these pots, like sprigs of grass and yeah, little French knots and things like that. So we can have a play with some embellishing next. Now that we've got our key pieces, I keep losing this needle and thread. I might get a longer piece. I still don't know what project I'm going to do on my holiday. It's like, once again, I've got time. I don't need to think about it yet. But by golly, it is coming up fast. So you're watching this on Monday. On Friday, I need to be trekking around the countryside delivering Bandit and Pepper to their pet sitters. They're going to friends and family so that they have plenty of puppy play time with other puppies. So then um, all that will be at home are my two pussycats who really, you know, as long as they get fed, they're happy. And a bit of a lap time of an evening, which our house sitter Chelsea can do. But um, we thought for something different, we're going to send the dogs off 
This is some serious doggy time with their mates. So on Friday, you will have a video and Saturday because they're pre-recorded. Henrik plus Susanna's project where she goes through vintage sewing techniques. And this next video is English paper piecing. So I do a page for my journal that is featuring English paper piecing and it's so nice, if I do say so myself. Really, really, really happy with it. And it's two episodes and the first one is, I believe, on Saturday. So this week I will get all of these pieces under control and you'll watch them for the next couple of weeks. But then I will be away for the next prompt and I don't know how I'm going to achieve anything to do with it. So I will probably be out of action. You'll have the pre-recorded videos that are in there and if I happen to get anything else up, but I'm running out of time. So I'll have to catch up on my Journal of Stitchery Garden Path project when I get back, which is fine. I'm really happy with where they are at progress wise, especially once I get a good week's work into the French garden. I think, um, I think that'll be really sitting quite well as well. So to lose a week of general work, all I'd really need to do is probably catch up on all the prompts. <clears throat> so, yeah. I'm hoping to film my adventures when I visit some of the fabric shops that I've earmarked when I get into some of these places off the boat for the day. And if I can get the internet to cooperate I doubt that I'll be able to upload anything on the ship. I believe, well, my husband thinks that once we get ashore, we'll be able to do something. But who knows? I also don't want to be sitting on the shore somewhere waiting for a video to upload either where I could be adventuring or sitting back on the ship eating. <laughs> who knows? I'm sure it'll all come together. All right, guys, we're coming up to the end of the video. So I will sit here and finish what I'm doing. Oops, slow down. Finish what I'm doing, get this finally all stitched down. And then I, like I said, I'll turn the video back on and pull out my beads. And we'll do some ground covers and some, some foliage around the base of all the pots, I think. That'll really blend it back into the piece. At the moment, they just look like they're sitting there. They need something to anchor them. Okay. Lovely. I just can't stop the needle. We've got two minutes. Keep going. Okay, the video, uh, the photo at the end of this video will be the pieces stitched down. That way you know I did what I said I was going to do. This takes time. Slowly overcast stitching all of these little edges to stop them from fraying. Okay. Enough, Corinne. Stop. All right, guys. <laughs> I will um, leave you be. I've just got to stitch down through here, put those flowers on, but everything else. Oh, that's a little, little loose there. That needs work. All right, guys. I will see you all in the next video. Have a lovely day and um, hope you get lots of stitching in. Bye.